guys, we're going to try some of the veggies from the off-grid hydroponic garden. Now these videos aren't out yet, they'll be out soon. You guys have kind of come along with the process you've seen, how we planted out the squash in the target containers. We've got that video up. Uh, I'm going to have another one talking about maintaining them. And basically we're going to try this out now. I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about the squash. The tomatoes, we've got the videos on that coming. I also have the video on how we put the buckets together. You can check that video out. I'll link it up above. And the real trick to this is maintaining them because it's pretty easy putting a bucket together and just throwing some nutrient solution, throwing your plant in there. But to keep it going for months and months and months uh, to finally get a harvest, that's the trick. That's why I try to get everyone to start with leafy greens and everything because th that's something that doesn't take long to mature. You can always harvest them as baby greens. You can't get like a, a baby tomato plant, right? You have to wait until it matures and maybe start eating them like Keely has the green tomatoes. You can start eating them as green tomatoes, but basically you have to wait, wait for it to flower, for it to produce your fruit and that, and then, you know, for it to actually ripen up. So the greens, after you plant them within a couple of weeks, you can already start getting baby greens off of it. You can plant dense, start thinning them out, eating the baby greens, and then let those grow into mature plants, have microgreens going and keep that going over and over. And it's very simple to do, and that's why I like all of you are trying that when you try to do things like this it takes a little bit more work it takes more time there's a lot more things that can go wrong and once you're done you're pretty much done with the the greens you can start over anytime and and just keep it going and going so we're going to try this out we we've got some squash this one's kind of bumpy i don't know if you can see that texture in there and see how that's smooth i don't know what the difference is you know we got them all from the same packet so if you guys know why they do that but it is possible to grow squash. These were pretty simple. We put them in the target cont containers with the mylar bags. But once they got pretty big, they looked beautiful. They had beautiful leaves. There was blossoms all over the place. We had bees coming in. But once they started producing fruit, I had to check them like almost every day. Uh, the container holds about a couple gallons of water. And with the plants, if you have several plants, if you have just one container, one plant, you might go a couple of days before you check it but when you have several containers they all use nutrients at different rates so you can't say like you know it's going to be every two days i'll go out and check this container might have gotten a little bigger might get a little bit more sun they might be soaking up your nutrients a lot faster than the middle container and the one over here might not be using that much so you can't like just go out one day and refill them and say i'm going to come back two or three days later once they get this big, you have to check on them like all the time. And that's really, to me, that's not part of the easy part when we talk about cheap and easy. I don't want to have to go out there and constantly have to check every day if I have to refill these containers. So if I had just one plant and I just wanted a bunch of beautiful blossoms, a couple of uh, squash coming off of it, that would be fine and I, I wouldn't have to check on it that often. But if you set up a garden where you have several of these, you're going to have to constantly check them. It's just like turning your, your irrigation on every day for your traditional garden. So it gets to be a little bit of a maintenance having to have these around. And then once they got big, then you get your other issues like the powdery mildew and, and little deficiencies and that. So with the greens, you know, if you got a problem, you can always just dump that container and start over. If you've always got microgreens and a bunch of, of greens going everywhere, then it doesn't really bother you. But if you have like squash plants and then something happens to, you know, you basically lose that plant and all the fruit that was coming with it. So that that's why if, if you guys want to go through the trouble, this is shown that it's totally possible. But as far as cheap and easy, it was still cheap. It's pretty easy doing it, but it takes a little bit of maintenance. And if you've got time and you really want to get out there like every day and mess around in your garden, then, then it's totally fine. So I'm going to try one of these. I'm going to leave these for Keely to go ahead and mess with. She's going to cook those up. I've got a little smaller one here that we just harvested. So it's a little green still on the bottom, but I'm going to cut it, slice it. I'm going to taste it with a little ranch dressing. And then I'm going to take a couple more of them and put them in the air fryer with a little Parmesan cheese on it. And I'll come back and show you that. But let's see this. 
yeah he's still a little bit green in there so I don't know what the taste would be like we probably should have left that one a little bit longer yeah he's still kind of green he's kind of like a cucumber and since he's still green that rind is still kind of tough so I'm just gonna take a little part there give me a little Caesar dressing He's like squash. We're gonna cook some up, a little bit of uh, olive oil, salt and pepper, but just as expected. So if you like squash, so we're gonna try the tomatoes. This one, uh, one of the first ones, there's more today. Every time I film, there's like a little bit more that are uh, starting to ripen up. So we're harvesting some of these. We're taking the ones that are, you know, start to ripen up. Uh, Keely's already picking off the green ones. Uh, she has this condition called histamine intolerance and I'll talk to you guys about that in another video. It, it, it's pretty important. It won't apply to everyone out there, probably just a small portion of you, but if it can help some of you all out, uh, she finally figured out what was going on, but basically she can't have red tomatoes, but she can eat like a green tomato. So she's been picking the green ones. I've been eating these and uh, there's more that are ripening up. Uh, I started with the Roma tomatoes. And I'm gonna make a bunch of cherry tomatoes. We're gonna try this. And I just got a little bit of salt for this. Go ahead and show you what that looks like in there. And cut a couple slices. Our first Roma tomato. And of course you can let these sit and get a whole lot more ripe if you like. Tiny bit of salt, or right? All right, let's try it. That's awesome. I'm not just saying that just because, like, it's my tomato and I grew it or I'm trying to talk you into hydroponics. That's one of the big misconceptions that I hear out there is that hydroponic vegetables don't have flavor. And we tried the jalapeno in a, a video a while ago. Those were hot, spicy, tasted like a jalapeno. Those are good. We're letting some of those get red on the vine. They're awesome. That's a good taste in tomato. Now, is it an award-winning one? It's a little Roma tomato. It's not totally ripe yet. You could let it sit a couple more days and, and ripen up even more and get a little more sweeter. But that right there tastes like any tomato I've ever had. You know, just as good as any tomato. So don't be afraid of things. Don't listen to everyone. If you want to try it, try them out. I've tasted tomatoes that came out of a garden that were mealy, tasteless. They were dry and pithy just all kinds of things it, it depends on how you're growing so if you can grow tomatoes in hydroponics and they come out like this you know don't listen to everyone when they say oh i won't grow a hydroponic tomato because i won't grow any veggies because hydroponics is flavorless it doesn't have any flavor they're lying to you that's good tasting tomato I can't wait. We've got a whole lot of cherry tomatoes coming in. Those videos are going to be coming up. Uh, they're not coming in yet. We're just planning them now. So we're going to take you along on that journey. Since this turned out well, we're going to do a lot more. We'll grow some veggies. Let's go toss some of these in the air fryer. Hunger. I know it's got Parmesan on it, but that's good tasting squash. Cheese, squash, and tomato all together. All right, you guys get out there, lift, inspire, keep on growing, be the change.